as Nigeria marks 62 years as an independent nation, there's been growing concerns as to what the future holds for its citizens. This concern is heightened by the seemingly deteriorating economic fortunes of the country, leading to high cost of living for most Nigerians. There are, however, divergent views as to the course the nation is on 62 years after independence. Nigeria's gross domestic product averaged 139.76 billion US dollars from 1960 until 2021, reaching an all time high of 546.70 billion US dollars in 2014 and a record low of 4.20 billion US dollars in 1960. In 2021, Nigeria's economy grew by 3.6% from 1.8% contraction in 2020 underpinned on the supply side by 4.4% expansion in the non-oil sector against 8.3% contraction in the oil sector. Non-oil growth was driven by the agriculture, which had 2.1%, and services 5.6%. Annual average inflation stood at 17.0% in 2021 against 13.2% the previous year, and above the central bank's 6 to 9% target. Inflation was fueled by food prices rises at the start of the year and exchange rate passed through. But according to the National Bureau of Statistics report, the country's urban inflation increased by 2.08% to 20.09% in July 2022 from 18.01% in July of 2021. On the other hand, the rural inflation rate reached 19.22% from 16.75% in the corresponding period of 2021. Although Nigeria's economy grew by 3.54% in real terms in the second quarter of 2022, the citizenry still feels the bite. This is even as the Debt Management Office puts Nigeria's total public debt stock at 42.84 trillion naira as of June 2022 from 41.60 trillion naira three months earlier, showing an increase of 1.24 trillion naira. Kaduna states our home is peculiar uh, because of this issue of insecurity. Business with development partners and uh, 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 suicide groups and non government organizations uh, can tell you categorically that we have reduction in engagement with these groups of people in Kaduna states now owing to the issue of insecurity. Now, uh, a lot of them used to come to Kaduna through train, but with the attack on the train on March 28th, a lot of them actually refused uh, to come to Kaduna. And of course, that is affecting Kaduna economy. If you have a lot of money in your hand, you can only buy a few things with money. For example, now, before now, you go to market, you buy 2,000 yam, at least it's there for you, you keep it two weeks to keep it. But now, the same 2,500 yams is now between 7,500 and 10,000 yams. The impact of the economy on you know, Nigerians as it stands, <laughs> yeah, nobody needs to be told that uh, it's really biting harder. Even the government so far has said that uh, the, the country is broke. The economy, regardless of your religion, your tribe, your ethnicity, uh, you are feeling it. That is just the truth. Nigeria appears to be poorer now than when it gained independence in 1960, despite having many resources. Although it's still one of the least developed and poorest nations in the world, it has the potential to become a significant economic force if the country's leaders are determined to learn from their mistakes and utilize the nation's abundant natural and human resources to advance economic development. Nigeria still faces issues such as low remunerations, infrastructure deficit, lack of human capital development, and many more. 62 years after gaining independence, many people believe that these issues should have been resolved long ago, given the country's enormous potential. This has resulted in a mass exodus and a major brain drain. Most people want to look at it negatively, you know, in a pessimistic point of view and say, oh, inflation is double digits, unemployment is above 20%. I tend to see these things very positively because we still have a huge market, 200 million people. It's our ability to harness this market, you get, that, that we, that is a challenge. Looking at things from the positive part of it, is people are living, people are living, living. So it's increasing the diaspora receipts. You get, there's a particular here where we earn more money from people bringing back money than even oil. But there are critical things that need to be put in place for systems to work in the people's favor. So the government really, really, really has no business in the economy beyond coordinating, serving as an umpire 
and providing uh, providing um, anyway, a very strong framework for private business to to to, to this and that. So we find that these sectors that we've talked about that really do not have too much government input beyond regulation and coordination. You see the way they are growing. But where government is playing very seriously, you get you see they have problems. See education. You get me now? Get, so 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 I think we should have less government. The problem that we really have in this country is the fact that the major political parties do not have any economic ideologies. So someone like me cannot say, okay, I want to vote for party A, because that party A leans towards free enterprise, which is what I sit for. I cannot say I want to vote for party B because party B leans towards big government, which is what somebody else might sit for. So we are now having major parties who do not have any economic ideology who are running around in confusion. So if we say, okay, we're going to have a new government 2023 of these three front runners, are you getting me now? It's just, it's just modeled up. We don't know what are their major economic um, um, leanings. Are you getting me now? So for me, you see, I believe in private business. I believe in private wealth. I believe in free enterprise. You get so that is the only way that you can create these jobs, create value, expand the economy. So government can only just sit aside and provide that security, provide the framework, provide infrastructure, you get me that protection that will allow for private world to move. As the country goes into next year's election, there are great expectations that a new leadership would emerge that can harness the vast potential inherent in the polity and improve the economy and livelihood of the people. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.